YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back. And today I'm going over first round sleeper prospects for the NFL draft. So those players that are sort of getting talked about in the first round that should be locks in the first round or go earlier than you think, or those players that really aren't getting talked about in the first round that could sneak in when we get to uh, to draft day, night one. Uh, so we'll break that all down. we got plenty of NFL draft content as well as free agency, trade content, a lot of that on, a channel, on the channel, a lot more to come. We have you covered fully on the Twitter and right here. So please subscribe, follow that Twitter, uh, smash that like button, turn notifications on me, much appreciated. Uh, check out that sided app you see underneath me. There's also a link in the description. You can win Amazon gift cards by debating football. It's pretty cool, so check it out. Uh, yeah, here's our Twitter, follow that. There's some Big Ben news going on. Um, nothing happens yet, but we're taught, we're breaking that down. Any, anytime something like that happens, we break it down instantly. Another big thing here. Um, if I can pull it up, we got a NFL fan base bracket going on, and this will also determine the order of the rebuild videos. I do, uh, AFC East is killing it. So many votes, bills and dolphins fans are really going at it. Uh, but come vote for your team. It'll help, uh, in multiple ways for future, future, future videos. So check it out. Uh, and follow that Twitter. Be much appreciated. Uh, the first first round sleeper. This one really isn't a big one. Mac Jones. Uh, some people don't have him as a first round prospect. Some people do. Not too many people have him high up. You know, really in the top fifteen. Maybe few people here and there. I am one of them. Um, it really starts with the Falcons at four. Not that they would. You know, they would take Mac Jones. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe they trade back. You know, you don't trade back for and take quarterback. That's kind of not a thing uh, because you're undervaluing your quarterback that's a different debate yeah you, 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 something you just don't do uh but yeah it starts with the Falcons because if they don't take a quarterback that pushes pretty much the quarterbacks back uh well if the Jets don't take one either I guess that that's the same thing it's even worse but I think they will um so that would force Mac Jones back a little further but the way I see it you know the the, the NFL from what I've heard as well the NFL is going to be higher on Mac Jones than, than the, the media I suppose or the fans I think people are kind of looking too much in Alabama quarterback you know Alabama quarterbacks haven't really worked out really that there's really not a whole bunch of logic behind that um, he's a very accurate quarterback intangibles are fantastic reactions are great knows how to go through his progressions um, he doesn't quite have the arm strength as the top tier guys or the mobility as the top tier guys so people kind of forget about him but he's still pretty solid in those categories you wish he was a little more mobile but he can use his feet it's all about how you use your feet you know you don't have to be the fastest guy in the world um, so I, I think he goes first round and people are sleeping on him. And you see some landing spots here. Who could potentially take him in the first round? You know, obviously I can list even more teams. Teams that could, you know, move around, trade back in from the second round. Again, you don't really trade back for quarterbacks. So I'm not really consider some of the other teams. I mean, the Panthers don't find their quarterback in free agency or via trade. They could take him that high. The Broncos. I like the fit there in Denver. I don't know if they would do it though. At one point, I thought that I thought they would, but it does feel like that. You know, they want somebody to. Step in now and start. They try to try, try to trade for Stafford, but then keep Drew Locke for the future. They didn't want to give up Drew Locke. So that's kind of what it tells me. Uh, the Niners could take him at 12. I think the Patriots would definitely like him. If he falls to Washington, the Bears, those teams aren't passing him up, in my opinion. If he falls to Washington, I really don't think they're passing him up. But if they do, then you got the Bears. I really don't think they're passing him up. And the Colts, if they fell to, they're all in the same range, 19, 20, 21. Fell to the Colts, they're not passing him up. So. Uh, yeah, Mac Jones should go earlier than people expect. Uh, next on the list, uh, offensive lineman Jalen Mayfield. He's getting first round talk, not by everybody though. You know, he, he's in the second round for some people. I think this guy's an absolute stud. I think he's a plug and play. Could be a dominant right tackle at the next level. I also think he could be, a, you know, a dominant guard. If some some teams will view him as guard, some teams at right tackle. Who knows? You know, some teams may be comfortable with him at left tackle, kind of like Jedrick Wills last year. I like Mayfield a lot. You know, nasty blocker, bully out there. Um, you know, very consistent. So I think he could go as high as the Broncos pick there. You know, maybe they trade back a little bit, but that wouldn't completely shock me. Nobody's really talking about it, but we know those guys closer to draft are going to shoot up the boards or even on draft night. There's always surprises, and people act like they expect what's going to happen, but they really don't. The Broncos are probably a right tackle away unless they bring Dodson back or Juwan St James stays healthy for once. You know, 
they, they could be a right tackle away from an absolute complete offense line, maybe one for the future. Uh, the Giants, if they want to keep Andrew Thomas at left tackle, they could pull the trigger on Jalen Mayfield. Uh, the Jets with their second pick, you know, put him at right tackle opposite of Mekhi Becton, of course. Good tackle duo for the future. They could put him at guard as well. Uh, Washington's one if they, um, they feel confident about him at left tackle. Um, you know, the Bears would love him at right tackle. The Bears, the Colts would be, I think the Colts would be confident with moving him to left tackle and developing him there. Uh, he wouldn't get by the Ravens at the end of the first round, I don't think. You know, they're going to trade Orlando Brown. to be a pretty damn good replacement there at right tackle uh, because Brown doesn't want to play right tackle, but Mayfield would, would play right tackle. So, He's some good fits. I think he goes earlier, and I think then people are expecting. I also think he's a first round lock. That's my opinion right now. Long ways to go to the draft still, sort of. Uh, next, another lineman, Landon Dickerson from Alabama. Uh, he lined up pretty much everywhere in his career. He played center for Alabama. He's the best center in this class, but I would like him at guard a lot as well. You know, some teams that could use a center also could use a guard, but a lot of these teams, yeah, they could use both, but mainly center kind of sticks out. Uh, Ted Karras, you can move around, move on from him in my, you know, in Miami. The Jets are in the market for a center. Ravens had a disaster, you know, at center snapping the ball last year. Steelers, Pouncey retired. Um, he's kind of been declining anyways. The Bills could use him at guard or center. They could move on from Morris in the future. Packers have Corey Lindsley, who's a free agent. Um, Dickerson could end up. Lindsley was, you know, maybe the best center in football, but Dickerson could be could be better, really, uh, in the near future. You know, in that with that unit on Green Bay. Uh, so that's a guy that could definitely go first. If it wasn't for his injury, I'd say he's pretty much a lock to go first. Uh, but he had that injury, so people are sleeping on him a little bit. Understandable. We'll see. Uh, next, uh, some receivers, Elijah Moore, who was extremely productive. You know, the downside of that, he was in the slot. They schemed up a lot of plays for him to be wide open. You can do that same thing for the NFL, but maybe you want a little more polished guy, a guy that can create on his own. But then you go kind of dive into the film. You can see the footwork and the route running ability, the, the ability to understand zone coverage and find the open gaps, which is actually a struggle for rookie turning NFL receivers, you know, that makes his stock go up and that actually makes him a pretty safe prospect because you're going to put him in a slot. If you get a guy like this, you want the passing attack to be a little better. You want to scheme some things up. He is a, I don't think the Cardinals take him, especially where they pick in the first round, but I think he is an outstanding fit there in Arizona. Um, so that would be a surprise to most people, but I think that's because that's how early they pick when they pick 16. Um, so that would shock a lot of people, but I think he is a fantastic fit there uh, in that Kingsbury offense. Kyler Murray, you know, put him in the slot. They need that guy that can scheme, uh, you know, plays up to, uh, you know, that guy that can, that can work the slot, can get that separation, you know, in at any given level of the field. They really don't have that guy. They got DeAndre Hopkins out on the outside, but um, that was kind of a problem for them. So, I don't think they take him that early. Maybe a trade back. I, I love the fit. Uh, you know, other receiver needy teams that could look to add a guy like this. Um, you know, so maybe those, some of those teams are hesitant to take a receiver in the first round. But if a team kind of go, you know, a team like the Packers or the Saints, or not really the Saints, they kind of been doing that with Michael Thomas, even though he's a totally different build. A team like the Packers, you know, they. They haven't, you know, if they got a shifty, great footwork guy that can play in a slot, you know, home run hitter, very good after the catch guy like this, that offense would be, you know, it would take a huge step up, which is scary to think about that. So, it, you know, all it takes is one team here in the first round to fall in love with the idea of scheming things up and get a guy with great footwork and home run ability. Um, I, <clears throat> I think there's a shot he can go first round. Uh, another receiver, Tyler Wallace, um, not getting a whole bunch of first round talk, getting some good – uh, reviews in the second round, but he could sneak in there too at, at the late one. I mean, this is another, he's another guy, fantastic downfield, great hands. Um, you know, he's not afraid to try to run somebody over and he can do that stronger than he looks has that speed. Um, you know, I think he was a guy that was from a risky, a risky prospect. I, I, you know, I'm watching him more and more and seeing him at the senior ball. I think he's more and more and more safer prospects risky at first because Oklahoma state kind of stuck him in one spot. Didn't have a crazy, route tree uh but that doesn't mean he can do those things from what i'm seeing you know i'm confident you just get the ball to him and he's a guy that can get the separation you know there's a lot of safe things about him when you know with this footwork consistent separation um you know big playability that i think teams will like him it's just like do we take a risk on some of these other receivers that have a ton of upside but you know can they figure it out right away or we just get Tyler wallace that we know we know what we're gonna get like this guy's gonna 
um, do some damage right away. And some some of these contending teams might want that. So he's a guy that probably sticks in the second round, but I think you know has a shot to go round one uh, and could go a little earlier than people are talking about here. Uh, running back, how about Javante Williams? Love me some Javante Williams, total package type of running back. You know, could catch the ball a little better when he does catch the ball, though. Um, he's got big playability, so teams will like that. Really strong runner, has the vision, has the balance, has the power, uh, and he gets going. As he gets going, you know, he, you know, he, he's a former track guy too. He gets going. He actually can run for a guy you know with that much power. Um, so teams may view him as maybe the. You know, safer running back, but also the instant impact. You know, a lot of people like Najee Harris, um, you know, and, and Travis Etienne as well. Travis Etienne didn't come out last year because there's reports he was getting third-round grades. You know, he definitely helped himself this year. But maybe there's some teams that's still not in love with him. Najee Harris kind of in the same boat. You know, teams weren't in love with him if he came out last year. Um, look to improve a little bit now. Uh, but one of those patient runners, not for everyone. You know, the patient runners are kind of going away, but he's still very talented. Um, you know, there's a report of a team out there, unnamed team, that said they don't have Najee Harris or Travis Etienne as their running back one. 99.9% .9 sure it's Javante Williams then. I can almost say 100%. Uh, and that's realistic to think. So the Dolphins, Jets, Steelers, Bills, teams are looking to add running back one perhaps. Uh, they actually could, you know, people that are expecting him to take a running back in the first round, they could surprise some people and take Javante Williams over those guys. It's definitely a possibility. I'm not saying it's locked in or anything, but it's definitely a possibility. A really good running back, legit run, running back one option here. Uh, like him a lot. Uh, moving on to the defensive guys, edge rusher Jason Away from Penn State, getting a lot of buzz lately about potential going for, potentially going first round. If he's taking first round, it's purely off the physical traits. I mean, I mean, look at the guy. You know, he's an absolute freak. Uh, crazy power, strength, got some speed. There's reports saying that he could run as high as 4-3 or as low, however you want to put it. I don't think he's going to run that fast, but that would be something. I mean, even 4-5-0 would be ridiculous. Uh, you know, that would be appealing to teams. Um, but I kind of get, you know, a little bit of, you know, a guy like Daniil Hunter, those vibes. You know, he came out of LSU, only had two and a half career sacks, uh, was an absolute freak build, uh, was already really good at stopping the run, was already polished, dominant stopping the run. So it seemed like the Vikings took him and then, you know, developed the pass rushing traits, used the the freak tools, you know, the physical traits that he has, uh, and he's one of the better defensive ends in football. So I think teams kind of see that with a guy like Jason Away, you know, that build. Uh, I was a little more comfortable with, with Hunter coming out uh, because he was a dominant run stopper. Away's tape, you know, really isn't that great, uh, if I'm being honest, but you – you can understand, uh, you know, the freakish upside here with this guy. So somebody's probably bound to do it, um, you know, but then it kind of brings in the debate, you know, he's not going to go, he's probably not going to go early first. So it brings in a debate, you know, these teams, a lot of these teams listed, you know, end of the first, you know, they want to compete right now. So do they want a project pass rusher? He's probably not going to make an impact. You know, I can tell you that he's probably not going to make an impact year one, maybe not even year two. And it's a little bit of a risk. Will he ever get to, will he ever live up to that light, that uh, hype, that physical trait ability, you know? Um, so will those teams want him? Yeah, look at the Jets with their second pick, pit and, pick and late. They're not, you know, in no rush to win right now, or maybe they are. Um, you know, but somebody's going to fall. You know, there's going to be the teams that want the guys that, you know, impact now. And there's going to be the teams that want the freakish upside guys that are a little bit of risk. So we'll see where he goes. Uh, Carlos Basham, I actually have him graded with the interior defense line. I like him at either 3 4 end or 4 3 D tackle, maybe a three technique. He did play, um, you know, mainly on the edge at Wake Forest, but he had plenty of reps, you know, inside as well. I like him interior, though, because, uh, you know, his build, his power helps, but his first step, even when playing, outside seem to be in for the most part first step seem to be inside so it seems like that's kind of his natural position you know and that's what shows on tape and then he goes to the senior bowl and they you know they they the coaches also take feedback from other coaches around the league they they put him in drills they put him inside so you see the teams are kind of seeing the same thing I am so I'm thinking he kind of plays you know, inside teams that are looking to get uh, pre interior pressure, um, you know, so he can sneak in the late first. I think it's a risky pick, though. You know, teams that are kind of desperate to get, you know, we know we're going to get interior pressure, how much is it going to help stop in the run. You know, he's, he is adjusting a position full time for, you know, so it's a little bit of a risk. You know, I'm still thinking second round, but could, you know, teams could be, could view him as that much, you know, being that uh, appealing because, um, 
yeah, he can kind of do different different things. And your you know interior pressure is so key, and you're kind of you're kind of almost guaranteed to get that with him. Uh, but yeah, some teams here, uh, teams that are either yeah looking for that interior. You know, some teams that I think would actually keep him outside. Maybe the team like the Saints. Um, team like the Jags are looking to switch to a 3-4. They probably play him at 3-4 end, you know, so inside Josh Allen and Clavon Chase on there. Um, the Colts would actually probably keep him outside as well, um, you know, kind of like what they did with Danico Autry there, um, you know, so a guy that can play three technique, but they kind of put him at DN too, but don't line him up all the way outside. So um, could kind of could be an upgrade there, which Autry was pretty uh, productive last year. So we'll see. Uh, interesting prospect. Uh, more pass rushers, Joe Tryon, who I like a lot. Watch his tape. He's very, he didn't play this year. He opted out, but last year, 2019, very productive off the edge. You know, he's got a collection of pass rush moves, even a bull rush, uh, for a guy that can be more of a three, four outside linebacker. So I like him a lot, you know, good length, uses his hands well, uh, and just got to the quarterback, you know, at a pretty high level, I thought. So I think this guy should be a first round pick. Not a lot of talk on him. Some people talk about him late first. But here's some fits here. You know, probably ends up going to a 3-4 team to play an edge rusher there. Uh, but I like him a lot. I really liked uh, his tape. He's a top five edge rusher for me, you know, in this class. You know, not really for most people. But, yeah, I like him a ton. Was really a fan of his tape. So he needs to be talked about more in the first round. Maybe teams are scared because he opted out this year. So we'll see. Uh, next, Ronnie Perkins, another pass rusher. Yeah, guy, I turned on his tape and I'm like, wow, this guy's going to get a lot more production than, than what he did at Oklahoma. Was solid in terms of production. But the traits he has, uh, and in Oklahoma sent him on a lot of stunts, which for some pl some players it creates more, you know, it depends on the situation. It creates kind of free lanes to the quarterback. Not really in this case for Oklahoma. They were kind of hurting Ronnie Perkins by sending him on stunts. You know, I think if you just let him work off the edge, he would have got a lot more production. So I'm not really worried. I think he's going to get more production. It probably depends on where, what, where he ends up, but I think he'll get more production. You know, he's crazy strong, has an insane motor. He never quits, you know, going after a quarterback. Really good stopping the run, too. He's not going to get fooled by misdirection. You know, he sees a read option. He's going to sit and read it and fire and make a form tackle. Uh, but the motor is insane. You know, you, sometimes you see even in the NFL, pass rushers kind of whiff on quarterback so the quarterback rolls out just in time and the pass rusher kind of jogs the rest of the way not Ronnie Perkins he, he's going to get you know in his mind he's getting that quarterback every play I love that uh yeah crazy strong like I said um so he's still probably a second round guy but he's the guy that's getting some talk and I love his tape and you know some teams will see this guy's going to be a lot more productive than he was in college. So, um, yeah, some teams could see that. I think he could fit as a 4-3-N or 3-4 outside linebacker. Um, yeah, re really good using his length, using his power. So that's that's a sneaky guy to look out for here, some fits. You know, similar teams here with the edge rushers. You're going to see the same teams. Uh, next, we got Jabril Cox, who's an off-the-ball linebacker from LSU, uh, former North, D North Dakota State linebacker. But, yeah, he's really good in coverage, and teams are looking for those coverage linebackers. He's pretty, you know, he's pretty solid making the tackles when he when he needs to. Could be a little better, um, you know. Look at these LSU linebackers. You know, he's not really. You look. At, I mean, Devin White was a total package type of guy. Really good in coverage. Really good at you know firing towards the ball. You know, instinctive, understanding plays. Patrick Queen last year. Jabril Cox actually a lot better than Patrick Queen in coverage. That's for sure. Other than that, though, Queen's got more, you know, wow to his game, more motor, more, you know, firing off, firing off the ball. And then Patrick Queen had the blitzing uh, upside, of course. But Cox is really good in coverage. You know, he's really good at sitting there reading the quarterback. And if he has to pick up a running back or tight end leaking out, he was able to do that, making a play on the ball too. He was pretty sneaky. The quarterback, you know, never really saw him a lot, and that's that was fantastic for him. So not too many landing spots if he goes first. You know, a team that's looking to get that linebacker that can also cover. Um, you know, some of those teams like that, I think you can play, I don't, you know, there used to be a strict, you need to weigh this much or be this strong to play linebacker, whether it was inside or out off the ball, that's gone. That's out the window. So, um, you know, I, I think you can even play inside for some teams, but yeah, teams that are looking to upgrade in terms of coverage linebackers, watch out for Jabril Cox. He's a very good one there. Um, Moving on to some corners, a lot of corners here. Greg Newsom, the second from Northwestern. Uh, yeah, quite a few landing spots here at the end of the first round. Um, yeah, definitely could go first. You know, you like his length, his athleticism. I think he's good enough to play man or zone, so some versatility there. Really good feet, you know, understanding when the ball is out of the quarterback's hand and then firing up, attacking the ball or attacking the player, creating that pass deflection. So he's pretty damn good. I think he's got a lot of upside, too, because – 
I guess that's kind of a negative too. He doesn't have a, a big sample size of playing at this level. You know, Big Ten teams only played, what, five or so games last year. Before that, he was struggling to finish the season. He was good, but he wasn't as good as he was, he was you know, recently. So that shows it's kind of a negative because we don't have this big sample size or we're going to get this Greg Newsome at all times, but also shows upside, ability to be coached, ability to improve. So teams will love his upside there. They'll like his length a lot. Um, you know, he can press. Teams love that, of course. So a guy that can be sneaking in the first round, he's a top five corner for me. It's pretty obvious who the top three guys, so he's in that battle four and or five. Uh, with this guy for me, actually, Asante Samuel Jr., who to me is a lot different than most of these other corners. And it's going to be the tough time for him going in the first round because, you know, I would like for him to go to his own team. And teams fall in love. You know, teams don't really take the corners that – they don't really view as a press, press man guy. You know, they don't want to be able to, they don't want to have to teach that. I don't know if you have to teach that with Samuel. Maybe he's a little under a little undersized, but I think he's going to be so dominant in zone. He's really good at sitting in his zone and re reading quarterbacks, and you see him actually leave his zone and go make a play on the football. He is a playmaker, and he can play man coverage. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, I think teams are going to run more zone, and some of these teams have run more man in the past, but who knows, they, you know, some coaching changes, you know, looking at the Packers. Uh, maybe they'll run a little more zone. Um, I really like him with a team like the Jets. You know, they're going to run a, quite a bit of cover three. A team like the Bills, I think opposite of Tredavious White. Uh, I, I really, you know, the Colts, you know, they ran quite a bit of cover two last year. That works. Um, you know, I really like him with those teams. He's a playmaker. You know, if he he's one of those guys that if he gets in the right scheme, the right team, he might look like cornerback one you know, in year one or even in the future just because the plays he is, is going to make. You know, if some team kind of forces him, in, you know, into a press man situation, a lot of man coverage, um, he's not going to look as good as some of the other guys. So, yeah, because he doesn't have a whole bunch of fits and some teams might be turned off in the first round because, because of that, they view other guys more physical, I guess. Um, the other teams that do want him may know we can wait. There's not a whole bunch of fits for, for him. We can wait a little bit, and that could be the reason he doesn't go first. But teams, like I mentioned, you know, they could be, we got to have this guy. He's going to create so many plays for us. We got to have him, so he could go first round because of that. Uh, Calvin Joseph is getting a lot of hype from Kentucky. He was actually a top recruit going to LSU, end up transferring to Kentucky. Kentucky had a really good defense. So really physical dude. They've been pumping out some good defense, good defensive players. You know, Lonnie Johnson a couple years ago was really physical for them. Really good man using his length, uh, not letting, letting too many you know big plays up, uh, you know for opposing receivers and some really good ones too. So, uh, yeah, he's getting some hype. Uh, you know, some teams still you know judge off you know who they were supposed to be, be you know become I guess out of high school and you know what we can create from him so still some upside so he could be a guy that sneaks into the end of the first round there so yeah he's getting some buzz here and there not a whole bunch you don't see him in the first round you know a whole lot but apparently around the NFL you know they're higher on him in the media so another guy that can sneak in there let's talk about a safety that also can play corner Javon Holland and he his name kind of got quiet a little bit because of the opt-out probably um but he's very solid. I like him at strong safety. I like him at slot corner. I actually like him outside. He got his last year he played for Oregon. He got reps outside, and he looked like a natural out there too. It's not a guy I want to stick out there on an island, you know, f uh, you know, full term there. But he's very versatile. You know, I wouldn't put a pass him to play free safety, but I don't really view him as a free. Um, he's good, you know, very instinctive reading plays up in the box. But, you know, if he's got to cover a tight end or a receiver in a slot. He's really good at sticking to them, really good at reading the quarterback. So not too many landing spots here because you, you start to question, you know, where would teams view him as a fit? Uh, even the Steelers, you know, they got Mike Hilton in the slot. Um, but would they view him at strong safety and upgrade over Edmonds? I think so. Uh, you know, but some teams, in, you know, where, where would they, where would they feel comfortable? So he doesn't have a whole bunch of great fits. So for that reason, teams that do like him may, may wait a little bit. He's like a ball player, heck of a ball player, though. Again, I, yeah, I mean, it's a defensive back in general. You can plug him almost anywhere, and he's going to be just as effective. So um, people have kind of gone quiet on him, I think, just because of the opt out. So these are some first round sleepers guys that can sneak in i'm sure more guys will come up yeah i usually do that I actually usually do this video closer to the draft so this is you know what is it february 17th so we actually come back we could talk about of course we'll do a sleeper uh in general you know mid to late round sleepers we always do that we got all kinds of um not just draft content but off-season content getting ready for free agency all the trade talk Everything you can think of, we have you covered here. More content than anybody, so please subscribe, smash that like button. That Twitter's a must-follow, at Goathouse NFL. Link in the description for that uh, and in the comments, so check that out.
It's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.